if my son wanted to go and at, when he's 16, wanted to go and be alone with a girl somewhere, I would prohibit it. And if someone said to me and asked me, what's the matter? Don't you trust your son? I would say, well, no, I don't trust my son. Well, why don't you trust your son? Because I don't trust his dad. <laughs> now, listen to me. There's a reason why my son is with me. If my son wasn't with me, one of the staff members from Heartcry, I never go anywhere alone. I always have a testimony, a witness. I never, I'm never anywhere alone. I don't, I don't trust circumstances. I don't trust the devil. I don't trust me. Put walls up everywhere. I protect myself with wisdom. But the beginning of that wisdom is that I know how frail all men are. Young people, sometimes you're too bold. You think you've got a lot more control than you actually do. I believe that young people should get to know each other in the church. I believe there should be inner relationships and fun and all kinds of things. But when you get to the point of taking someone seriously, romantically, as a possibility of a wife or something or a husband, I want you to learn to proceed with a great deal of caution. A great deal of caution. Young men also realize this. It doesn't matter if you tell a girl 14 times a day we're just friends. She's not going to believe you if you're calling her all the time. Be careful how you deal with hearts. Men, young men, be very careful. First of all, if you desire a young lady because you would like to spend time with her, uh, ask yourself, what is the commitment you're willing to make to her? Are you just wanting to use her to have feminine companionship or friendship without giving any commitment? Young men, do you have, really have any business thinking about a relationship with a girl if you're still a boy? Um, if dad's still paying the insurance of your car, you're a boy. M boys don't play with girls. Men. Men have relationships with girls, not boys. You see, guys, listen to me. This is very important. You should desire uh, companionship. But companionship of a female requires that you be a man first. Okay? That means you're going to have to leave aside childish things. You young boys, even in your early teens, you need to be thinking about becoming men. Have you ever watched the movie Master and Commander about the, the British fighting the French privateers? And when the two boats lock up, the two ships lock up in battle on the ancient seas there between England and France, the man who leads the Marines into the other boat and makes the charge is about 16 years old. The boy that's handling the helm on the boat is about 13 and he's already had his arm blown off in battle. What's the point? The point is, they were men. You live in a culture that wants to keep you as boys until you're 35. You run around with other boys. When you make money, you think about buying shoes and video games instead of saving money to put down payment on a house for a woman. You young men need to revamp the way you think. You need to think about growing into men as quickly as possible. As quickly as possible. And if you say that's not what I want, then you need to forget the idea of having companionship with a woman. I most certainly wouldn't let you get near my daughter. I'd beat the living daylights out of you. <laughs> my whole point is it's a trust. It's a stewardship. It's sacred. And it's also very dangerous. This is God's daughter. And so young men, let me encourage you, don't just run with boys or you'll always be a boy. 
run with your dad. If your dad won't run with you, then find some older men who will take you under your wing. Go to school if you feel like you're called to go to school. Work hard. Have some calluses on your hands. Suffer. Make your way in life. I don't care if you're, if you're 14. Start putting back money. If you work for your parents or whatever you do, start putting back money. Think about life. A friend of mine walked up to some of the girls in a church we were in, and they were godly girls, and said, well, young ladies, you, a lot of young guys here to, in our church. Have you thought about marriage? And they go, well, there's, there's nothing but boys in our church. And he said, what do you mean? He, and the girls said this to him, my friend Don. They said, these guys, when they, when they get a little money, they go buy an Xbox. We want to marry someone who can put a down payment on a house, who pays his own insurance for a car. Do you know what happens in a fallen society? Isaiah 3, guys. And you know what it says in Isaiah 3? That the young boys will rail against the older men and women will rule over them. We're seeing in the United States the master's level education, the PhD level is now being taken over by women. Women basically raise their husbands. That shouldn't be. Man up. Play the man. Be the man. Work. Serve Christ. Be serious. Be sober. Run with men so that you become men. Young ladies, the same goes for you. You want to marry someone who you think, I don't care how beautiful she is. Doesn't matter how beautiful she is. I mean, she's going to get old. <laughs> Except for my wife, if she's listening. <laughs> My whole point is this, young ladies. I married a woman who I felt could, could also raise children, that had dignity, that would work, that would stand beside me, that was wise. My wife is my greatest counselor. Okay, you, you don't want to marry some girl that has no brain. She may be beautiful, but she doesn't have a brain. And she doesn't have any spirituality. And she doesn't learn. And she doesn't care about deep things. Don't marry somebody like that. Marry someone who has integrity. Who's a strong woman. She's made herself strong. Her arms are strong. She's a woman who thinks. A woman who can help you and teach you. I know you didn't ask those questions, but I, I see our whole society and our church falling apart. My wife says that if a man, if a man-eating lion escaped from the zoo in the United States, he'd starve to death because there's no <laughs> men to eat. That was my wife says that. Sometimes I come home from preaching and she goes, how's it gone? I said, man... They were, they were hating me. They wrote all kinds of horrible things about me. Sometimes I want to quit. And she goes, you want to quit? You just need to man up and go back out there. <laughs> I told her, I said, you want me to cancel this meeting? You know, because you're going to have a baby. I mean, you're up in the mountain on this cabin and all this stuff. And we had bears break into our house three times last year. And... Uh, and, I, and I said, you want me to stay at home and cancel this? She goes... What's happened to you? <laughs> you're, you're talking like a wimp. Go preach the gospel. She goes, you got me into this problem. I'll get me out. <laughs>